y queremos dar inicio a la última sesión del día de, la, del día de hoy, del primer día de la conferencia, donde hablaremos de un tema que a mí en lo personal me encanta, que es la innovación tecnológica para una educación sin barreras. En esta, en esta ocasión, cuatro organizaciones premiadas por Ciro Project en su convocatoria del 2020, que provienen de América Latina, el Caribe y España, presentarán sus buenas prácticas para desarrollar proyectos que garanticen el acceso a la educación de niños y jóvenes con discapacidad a través de la tecnología. En esta oportunidad, contaremos como moderadora con Carolina Carrasco, quien ha liderado dentro del BitLab todo lo relacionado a lo que, al tema de innovación. Eh, es por eso que agradezco, Carolina, que nos acompañes eh, y muy bienvenida a, a la conferencia de Ciro Project en Latinoamérica, el Caribe y la comunidad hispanoparlante. Muchas gracias. Muchísimas gracias, Carola. Y bueno, primeramente, muchas gracias a los organizadores de esta conferencia por invitarme a moderar este panel, eh, que como tú bien dices, eh, nos mueve muchísimo, está pero en el centro de nuestra misión, eh, cómo las innovaciones tecnológicas pueden ayudar a una educación sin barrera. Eh, nosotros estamos convencidos de que la tecnología puede permitir que las soluciones a los problemas, a las, a las brechas que hoy día enfrentamos, eh, pueden ayudarnos a alcanzar escalas adecuadas para poder responder al, a, la a la magnitud de esos desafíos. Y por supuesto, eh, dos muy importantes son precisamente la educación y la inclusión. Eh, desde el Banco Interamericano de Desarrollo, por supuesto que compartimos la definición de la Convención de las Naciones Unidas que de alguna manera separa ¿no es cierto? la discapacidad de las personas, eh, situándolas en relación a el, eh, digamos, el impedimento en particular, eh, la separa de las barreras que estén presentes en el entorno. Y esto es súper profundo porque redefine ¿no es cierto? el concepto de barrera, eh, haciéndonos a todos responsables de poder ayudar a eliminarlas, disminuirlas y construir un futuro que sea inclusivo, posible para todos. El sueño de la, de la educación inclusiva presenta muchísimos desafíos, el tema, digamos, de la capacitación de los docentes, de la cultura, de todas las comunidades educativas, la infraestructura, la conectividad, etc. Eh, pero aquí eh, la tecnología, sin duda, puede ayudar muchísimo. Eh, siempre eh, centrado, ¿no es cierto?, en los estudiantes, en poder ayudar a formar a los docentes de la diversidad y, y con infraestructuras que se adapten a las necesidades. Es decir, eh, la tecnología más bien vista como un medio dentro de un contexto que tiene que adecuarse, ¿no es cierto?, a eh, poder disminuir todas estas barreras. La tecnología ha facilitado grandes avances en, en términos de accesibilidad y hoy día vamos a ver ejemplos súper concretos de ello, por ejemplo, la inteligencia artificial está ayudando a personas con discapacidad visual para poder convertir texto en voz de un asistente virtual o usuarios que tienen problemas de audición eh, pueden obtener interpretaciones de conversaciones o personas con discapacidad física mejorar la movilidad de sus sillas de rueda gracias a una expresión facial y otras tecnologías que también están mostrando muy buenos resultados eh, como la realidad aumentada o la impresión 3D están ayudando a mejorar eh, temas de concentración o aprendizaje de los estudiantes y eso es súper súper importante al momento de desarrollar habilidades socioemocionales o el sentido de la, de la independencia. Desde el banco, nosotros promovemos el desarrollo de todas estas tecnologías, pero basado en el marco de una serie de principios de responsabilidad, de confianza, transparencia, seguridad y, por supuesto, eh, protección de datos personales que podamos facilitar que las personas con discapacidad adopten de manera temprana estas soluciones eh, tecnológicas, eh, implica no solo poner a disposición la tecnología, sino que asegurar que el diseño de esa tecnología cumple con ciertas características de facilidad de su acceso y facilidad de uso. Y por supuesto que se cuente con las habilidades digitales eh, necesarias para poder aprovechar al máximo eh, estas tecnologías. Eh, en el actual contexto del, del COVID eh, surge también otra, 
eh, desafío, ¿no es cierto?, que es el de la conectividad, que es el que permite que eh, todos y todas podamos aprovechar eh, las tecnologías. Y ahí, desde el BID, eh, estamos buscando eh, siempre cómo podemos ayudar a articular las distintas iniciativas, tanto del sector público como del sector privado, la sociedad civil, y con eso ojalá capitalizar y generar las máximas sinergias que nos permitan eh, que nadie eh, quede fuera eh, del acceso a la, a la educación. Como comentaba Carola al inicio, en este panel vamos a conocer la experiencia de cuatro iniciativas que han sido premiadas en la convocatoria de Cero Project de este año eh, y que eh, de alguna manera están generando buenas prácticas y experiencias para garantizar el acceso a educación de niños y jóvenes con discapacidad gracias al uso de las tecnologías. Eh, primeramente vamos a conocer la experiencia de videolibros de enseñas en que Silvana Weinberg y Juan López Macchio de Canales Asociación Civil eh, de Argentina nos van a contar eh, de esta experiencia. Silvana es licenciada en Fonoaudiología y Máster en Lingüística, fundadora y directora de Canales Asociación Civil, es emprendedora social de Ayoca y ha tenido cargos en el sector público, tanto en el Ministerio de Educación de Buenos Aires como de la Nación en áreas de educación especial. También fue ganadora del Premio Emprendedor del Año en 2016 de Ernst Young y ha sido coautora y coautora de diversas publicaciones nacionales e internacionales en estos temas. Por su parte, Juan es instructor de lengua de señas en Argentina y forma parte del equipo de canales donde coordina esta iniciativa que nos van a compartir, Video Libro en Señas. Es miembro activo de la comunidad sorda y miembro de la Confederación Argentina Deportiva de Sordos. Así que, sin más, por favor, Silvana, Juan, eh, adelante con su presentación. Nuestro intérprete está eh, con el micrófono en mute. Disculpen, ¿ahora se escucha? Sí. Bien, disculpen también. Pueden poner, ¿Pueden poner la presión que traje para presentar en esta, en esta mesa, por favor. Cuando ya esté, puedo continuar. ¿Ya está lista la presentación? Aún no la veo. La van a ver, la van a poner en, en, en un minuto. Muchas gracias. Ok, está bien. Gracias por informarme. Bueno, voy a presentarme. Soy Juan Daniel López. Eh, nací en Argentina y estoy en la organización canales, trabajando con un equipo de personas que busca hacer accesible eh, y, y lograr la inclusión de personas sordas. Y diseñamos una página web don donde pueden ustedes encontrar videolibros. Creo que ya está la presentación. No sé, nos hemos extendido un poco, pero... Sí, eh, mil disculpas. Eh, están buscando en este minuto la presentación. Uh -huh. Bien. Quizás mejor eh, mientras vayan buscando, yo adelanto lo que quiero decirles o, quiero comp Perfecto. o queremos compartirles. Dale, por favor. Muchísimas gracias. Sí. Quiero hablarles sobre Beatriz y Isabela. ¿Sí? Cada una tiene su seña en lengua de señas. Una de ellas este, 
eh, o sea, no escucha, eh, por ejemplo, Beatriz no escucha absolutamente nada, es una persona sorda, adulta, de unos 85 años, y ella este, nació en familia, en una familia oyente, donde no sabía lengua de señas, eh, también cuando eh, fueron al médico, cuando ella era niña, pues, bueno, al detectarle una situación de discapacidad auditiva, pues, este, así fue tratada toda su vida. También los profesores que trataron su educación no sabían también de lengua de señas. Entonces, ella no aprendió lengua de señas y ni tampoco tuvo acceso a información de lengua de señas en toda su vida. Así, esta experiencia lo vive un 80 o más por ciento de las personas sordas, donde no tienen acceso a la información, a cuentos, a cosas que normalmente el resto sí puede tener. Ahora bien, este fue el caso de Beatriz. Ahora, Isabela, ella tiene apenas añitos, ¿sí? Ella eh, creció en una familia de personas sordas, Do, y es solamente, esta, esta realidad solamente sucede con 5% de las personas sordas a nivel mundial, donde entonces pueden tener acceso desde la infancia a la lengua de señas y ser parte de la comunidad sorda desde niños. Entonces, la experiencia de Beatriz este, es distinta a la de Isabela, ya que Beatriz nunca tuvo acceso a información y a cuentos como sí lo tuvo Isabela. Entonces, la lectura este, de cuentos le permite una, un acercamiento al lenguaje, a, a la invención, a, a sentirse parte de una cultura donde entonces la, estas personas que se acercan a la lectura pueden entonces imaginarse lo que hay detrás. Y la lectura es algo muy importante para poder desarrollarse personalmente, desde que se es niño hasta que se es muy adulto. La lectura es muy importante en eso, y sobre todo, o por ejemplo, la lectura en lengua de señas. Por ello, nuestro equipo, Canales, hemos nosotros eh, integrado personas sordas y oyentes para crear entonces, en el 2003, ¿Sí? Eh, o ver, darnos cuenta de la necesidad de que la educación de las personas sordas fuese de calidad. Por ello, entonces, vimos la necesidad de, de, de mejorar las habilidades de los maestros y también de las personas que se encargaban de la educación de niños sordos para que la educación así fuese y así pasaron muchos años hasta llegar en el año 2000, al año 2011, donde creamos videolibros que son libros en lengua de señas, que y hay, hay, eh, se manejan tres tipos de lenguas. ¿sí? Es una web eh, gratuita donde se pueden descargar incluso videos en lengua de señas y allí también este, están en lengua de señas, está en español y también está en voz en off. Para que entonces la familia o amigos que así no sepan lengua de señas puedan disfrutar con estas personas sordas que disfrutan a través de los videos de lengua de señas. También pueden descargarse para llevarse a lugares donde no hay eh, posibilidad de tener acceso a internet de manera continua. Los videolibros, este, hemos hecho un trabajo para entonces aprovechar los avances tecnológicos para que de esta manera estemos actualizados. Los videolibros, este... Eh, están, son una traducción de los libros que, es, que, que existen o de los cuentos que existen. Están primeramente en lengua de señas argentina y como comento, es una traducción que respeta la forma eh, original en que han sido producidos estos libros. ¿Sí? Y no eh, es una narración. Es no una narración with freedom of expression. We just do a literal translation of the stories in the book, in the original books, and these are available in the, in the web page. So video books have images that go with the stories, What the young people who enjoy these, um, the children and young people can take advantage of these images. And they are in three different languages, sign language, 
Spanish and voiceover. So um, it allows that way the integration of other people who the people who can't understand sign language can accompany their children to see these stories. This book is a library, whether it is Argentinian, Paraguayan, and Uruguayan sign language that we have been working together so that we can create these video books that are also being worked in Nicaraguan and Mexican sign language so that they can reach more people around the world. And so the people can be um, related and can be involved with literature and stories. It's a very ambitious project, but we are committed to work. Both people with hearing disabilities and people on without disabilities, so that to go beyond that way, it can reach more people. So far, we have 59 uh, books translated, and we have uh, had more than 5,000 visits, and also we have had some 3,000 visits, specifically in this case, in the page itself. So people enter the page, the, the, the web page, the portal, and some people have downloaded books as well of these videos. And from Argentina, Mexico, Nicaragua, we, have, we are working so that they do this. And UNICEF has taken this model so that in this moment we can, they can do videos that are accessible for deaf people. As of, as of today, Isabella, for example, the girl I was talking about first, she reads the story in sign language and this experience of Isabella, who went at the moment 33, me, 33 million deaf children in the world can have this as a reality and they can access to reading story written as Isabella does. It doesn't matter whether your parents are do not have the hearing disabilities, so in any ways you can have access to culture and education in sign language from very early beginning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan, for this very nice initiative. So impressive the way it has been reaching different countries and different cultures. Now, Maria Angeles Lafante from Fundacion will be sharing the experience of Bright Tito, which is a free education model for blind children and children with low vision. Uh, she's been working in Fundacion Once Spain since 1986 in, in topics of inclusion of people with visual um, disabilities and teaching Braille uh, language to all the educational community. And she works in collaboration for implementing technological tools that can be accessible. And, and she will be sharing with us the method called Brightico. Welcome, Maria Ángeles. Please share us your presentation. Hello. Good afternoon. What, everybody? Yeah, I'm talking about Brightico. It is a method for literacy and learning of Braille that we have been uh, creating an answer directed to all the students, not uh, with or without visual disabilities, mm. because it is an inclusive method. Onse is an organization to improve the quality of uh, life of people with visual disabilities by means of inclusion uh, policies. We work in different five educational resources in three specific teams that work with us in education administration in order to contribute to inclusion of more than 99% of students with hearing disabilities or blind and following the national official, official curriculum. And through the Spanish board, we started to um, do a research on Braille didactics. In order to do this, we created Blightico. Theoretical basis and all the research 
that uh, gave rise to Pratico is an investigation research work by in 2015. It's called Bright Detectives Beyond the Code New Perspective in um, Literacy for People with Visual Disabilities. You can put it there. Brightico is a program for reading and writing, learning, Braille reading and writing and literacy, and is aimed to all the students, especially to those with visual disabilities. The main principles that um, are in this method is inclusive, flexible, motivating, and the goal is to respond to the needs of all the community, students, teachers, families, and this in the educational centers. The resources used, of course, is informatics that are available now at homes and at the educational centers. It is accessible, inclusive. Braille needs to be learned in paper support. We have activities that enrich the whole educational community, respecting the each rhythm and pace. The idea is to encourage positive um, emotions towards Braille, raising awareness towards Braille and increasing the use of in, in technology and in acquiring functional reading and writing skills, literacy, and teaching Braille, following the rules of neurodidactics, and responding to the needs of the students, but also considering the needs of the Braille system, and finding a didactic, versatile method, uh, accessible and motivating for learning Braille, free, and you can learn about it in the onset on the page, education.onset.es. Para optimizarlo, hemos creado también unas guías didácticas. We have also created some didactic guidelines in order to take most advantage of the application. In the video we're going to show, you will see how it works and how children are working with Pride and the way they do work on Pride from the very beginning. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about the four modules that the Pratico is about, is made of. It is very important that it starts from pro practically from birth, because we're talking about literacy. The first module we're talking about from zero to two years old, and we're working in module one, hence, little hence, and we're um, working on the previous skills towards Pride, and we want to inspire the kids to learn about the world and give them nice experiences. So the process, the literacy process starts here, sensory development, psychomotor skills, development, um, motivation towards Pride, and sensory perception, tactile, auditory. We're talking about um, Pre, uh, up preparation for read, writing and reading, but we don't start with the Braille, but we're talking about phonology, uh, awareness, motor and hand, motor skills and handling skills, tactile development, be, um, bilateral coordination, and all the executive functions, attention, memory, reasoning, cognitive, development and the use of ICTs, the Braille line, the tablets that will be, and the computers that will be so useful for them in their learning of this. And then we go to Model 3, which is Braille from 4 to 8, where, where is the module they learn to write and read in Braille. And being functional for communication and for learning at school. So by means of an inclusive, motivating, fun and flexible method that can follow the dynamics of the classroom, the normal classroom. So it's, well, we're talking about ergonomy, precision, 
reading speed, executive functions, and we're talking about raising awareness in all the educational community regarding Braille. Braille can be used um, by um, children who are blind and non-blind, and also raise awareness towards the need of having Braille at school and in the society, and finally model for super Braille 4.0 from 8 to 13, 14 years old, to increase and strengthen Braille reading so that they, we can give them um, resources for application on the school curriculum, music, science, arts, to improve their understanding and the speed, all the study techniques, technology, you now the Braille line and the tablets are more important here and for it to be a functional code when they have to work. And we are completing Brightico, elaborating all the fast guidelines in order to work in the whole educational community. And we want to do Brightico directed to, for people who are adults. And also we are working on a document for uh, in making put an emphasis on the important uh, importance of learning to to write and read as early as possible now it would be good to see a video so that is in the last uh, slide please you go to next and at the end there is a link for a video so that you can learn more about practical Behind me, there are some of the stories we have made in Braille and in relief. A relief sign generator for learning Braille, and all the materials are freely available in the website that we talked about at the beginning. But if you want now, we can play the video, please. Muchísimas gracias, María Ángeles. Eh, nos confirman, por favor, en la producción. Thank si you, María Ángeles. Please tell us production if we can watch the video. O pasamos eh, muy todo el tiempo directamente a la presentación Because siguiente. Because of time, we go to the next presentation Carlos by Carlos Pereira. We will be presenting Lima. Of alternative communication with people with learning uh, disabilities. Carlos is founder of this company, the father of a girl with cerebral palsy because of a medical negligence. That was the reason why he got so passionate about empowering people with disabilities and creating several initiatives to improve their lives, like Glibox which is a software that allows non-verbal people to be able to communicate. Congratulations, Carlos. Very impressive initiative, actually. Carlos has been uh, recognized by Challenge um, Disability Challenge from Google and other distinctions by BID and Schwab Foundation of the World Economic Forum. So congratulations, Carlos, with this initiative. Please go ahead with your presentation. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Chile. Um, I'm so glad to be here talking to you guys. Um, and I would like to go to the first slide so we can comment about how this all started. Are you guys seeing this slide here? Oh, let's see if I can see these slides. Here. Yeah, these slides are here. So perfect. So can, can we go to the first slide, to the next slide, please? Yeah, so all this started uh, 13 years ago when my daughter Clara was born. Um, and uh, due to a medical mistake um, during my wife's labor, she has cerebral palsy. So she can't walk and she can't speak. Uh, when she was born, she stayed in an ICU for uh, a month. And this is the first photo that I have, that I had the opportunity to hold her in my arms. Um, and I didn't know how bad it could be, but I knew that she had a brain damage. She had done an MRI at that time. Um, and um, I, I didn't know how bad it would be or her brain damage. But I had this commitment towards her to help her uh, live a, a, a full life as much as I could. 
So can we go to the next slide, please? When I was looking for alternatives for my daughter um, to communicate, I was looking for alternatives out there. Um, and if we can go to the next slide, please. Oh. Yes. So yeah, alternative communication yeah, devices. Yeah, you, can, yeah. you can touch to show the text, please. Alternative communication devices out there. Usually they have dozens of items on the single screen. There are standalone solutions and they're complicated to find what you want to say. Um, and I wanted to do something different for my daughter. Can we show the next slide, please? La siguiente diapositiva, por favor. La siguiente, la siguiente diapositiva. My Spanish is so bad. So I apologize for that. Yeah, so what is Evox? Actually, Evox is not just an alternative communication software. Actually, Evox is a platform composed of three things. The first thing is a unique communication software that runs on uh, Android tablets and Chromebooks. Uh, the second is a community of users creating uh, content curated by us. And third is a portal with essential data for education and managers. Can we go to the next slide, please? La siguiente. La siguiente. Okay, if we go to the, ne uh, to the next one, la siguiente, por favor. Yeah, if we go to the next one, uh, Livox has many different uh, intelligent algorithms, but one of my, my favorite ones, when we got a grant from Google, a uh, half a million dollar grant to improve a new technology using natural language processing. So basically how this works, you can actually talk to the person with disability, Livox listens to what you're saying, and then helps people with disabilities to answer. Livox understands the context of a conversation. So you activate it by saying the name of the person with disability. So I can talk to my daughter and say something like, Clara, how many spoons of sugar do you want in your coffee? Livox understands that, and then it shows a screen similar to this one. So she can say, I would like two spoons of sugar, or maybe a little bit more. Imagine if you are a student with a disability and you are in a classroom, a teacher can talk to you, say your name, Clara. So a teacher can say, Clara, uh, is this book about a dog, a cat, or a rabbit? The box understands that you should automatically talk to the rabbit. This speeds up communication by a lot. We have published some papers in partnership with MIT and some American universities showing the breakthroughs that we have in learning for people with disabilities. But don't buy now, there is more. If you go to the next slide, uh, la siguiente diapositiva, por favor. If you go to the next one, uh, you can see that um, we did a little bit more because we started to see so many needs of people with disabilities. For example, people with motor disabilities like my daughter, they don't touch the touch screen device like we do. They touch like this, they drag their fingers, they do involuntary touches, and it was impossible for a person like my daughter to use a touch screen device. And for that reason, I uh, created an algorithm called IntelliTouch. If you touch the screen of Livox, Livox knows that your touch is perfect and does nothing. But if a person like my daughter touches it, Livox, hey, something's wrong. And then it analyzes how many fingers are touching, for how long, if the person is dragging their fingers or not, if they're doing any voluntary touches, and then it corrects the imperfect touch of people with disabilities. This is done automatically on the fly. Um, and we, Vox has many different intelligent algorithms for motor, cognitive, and visual disorders. But moving forward, uh, Livox also is not just for uh, the, the software for people with disabilities. Uh, if we go to the next slide, please, a siguiente, por favor. You will see that when we first created Livox, Livox was starting being used uh, by many of our users as an alternative communication device. Okay. And uh, Livox was born for this, but people started to create so many amazing content and we wanted to uh, enable them 
to improve the discovery. And that's why we created Livox Store. Livox Store is a platform that enables anyone to create high quality content um, <clears throat> for any person with disabilities in minutes. And these content are, are created by parents, by professionals, by teachers, uh, and uh, they go beyond just alternative communication device, um, alternative communication. There are routines for people with autism, musical instruments, science lessons, uh, music lessons, uh, books, and uh, the, 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 the limit is only the creativity. So there are this huge library of amazing content for people with disabilities available for each Livox user. But uh, we wanted to engage also uh, the third actor in this area. Can we go to the next one, please? La siguiente, por favor. If we go to the next one, we will see that uh, some of our users are um, educational managers. Okay, We do sales to many governments, and they wanted to see if the users are actually using Livox or not, if they were improving or not. We evaluate every user of Livox in five different categories. And then let's say you, you, you have a student with a disability and they just started using Livox. Um, and um, uh, uh, the overall score for this student when they started using Livox is 70%. You can drill down and see that cognition for this student is only 20%. So um, with this, you can start working a little bit more in cognition to improve the overall score. But um, you, this also can help you to see the improvement over time of users, users using Livox. Can we go to the next one, please? The next slide, la, la siguiente, por favor. La siguiente slide. If you go to the next one, you will see that Livox is um, an amazing tool for schools. We're being used in many schools in uh, many countries. La siguiente, por favor. Uh, if we if we see how Livox is being used in many different schools from different locations, uh, we are present in ten countries now, uh, and you will see in the next one uh, la siguiente por favor. Uh, Livox being used in many different countries from Brazil to United States, from the Middle East, and from many different locations. La siguiente por favor. And you can see in the, in the next slide, uh, we using people using Livox in countries like Djibouti, um, the Middle East. I had to Google Djibouti because I, I didn't know where was it. It's a developing country in North Africa. So it's amazing for me to think that something that I created for my daughter in my home computer is going so far. Um, and uh, la siguiente, por favor, so we can finish. Uh, and the last slide is just my contact info. Uh, Livox is available in 25 languages. Spanish is one of them. And I would, I would love to partner with you guys so you can take Livox also to uh, Latin American Spanish-speaking Spanish countries. La siguiente, por favor. And this is my contact info in the next slide. Uh, so you guys can get in touch with me through carlos at livox.com.br or through our website. Uh, muchas gracias. Carlos, thank you very much. Really very impressive, the, the solution and the scale that you have reached. So we'll be contacting you in the, in the next uh, days. Eh, muchas gracias. Bueno, finalmente, pero no menos importante, eh, Laila Mica del Instituto Rodrigo. Finally, but not less important, from Laila Mica from to Rodrigo Pantes will present uh, the MERSA web portal that groups different resources and institutional education for the Está, eh, se ha especializado en marketing digital. Digital marketing and she's been working um, in civil society. She's part of the Rodrigo Mendes Institute and coordinates this uh, um, Thank you. Welcome, Laila. Ah, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Laila Micas. I'm a white woman with long black hair. I'm 30 years old and I'm wearing a dark blue shirt with black colors. Uh, I have been working with education for over 10 years and at Rodrigo Mendes Institute for five years. Uh, next page on my slides, please.
Yes, thank you. Uh, the Rodrigo Mendes Institute is a non-profit organization located in the city of São Paulo in Brazil. Uh, our mission is to collaborate so that every person with a disability has a first-rate education in a mainstream school. The Institute's projects are based on three pillars. Uh, teacher training, production of knowledge and sharing of good practice, and advocacy. Next page, please. Project Diversa is an internet platform that offers free content about inclusive education best practice. Uh, it offers reference and knowledge for teachers, principals, public policy managers and makers, families of people with disabilities. And Diversa was created in 2011 by our institute with the support of the Brazilian Ministry of Education and other organizations committed to the promotion of equality. Uh, in Diversa, there are reports of experience of educators and case studies on good practice. In all regions of Brazil, we have five regions at different levels of education and also in other countries. Uh, we also have uh, articles of experts, specialists in, of the, on the topic of physical inclusion, examples of accessible pedagogical materials and how to build them, and discussion forums for the main questions of teachers and family members about quality education. Uh, here we have a photo of a group of more than 30 teachers that participated in a presential training in Sao Paulo. Diversa organizes face-to-face -face meetings between educators and technical representatives of public education networks to discuss and exchange experience on real cases of inclusion of students with disabilities. These meetings are held in partnership with the Volkswagen Foundation, and this year, with the pandemic, we continue to organize these meetings in a virtual way. Uh, next page, please. Here we have another photo, photo with an example of a material created by the teachers based on universal design for learning. Uh, Diversa also organizes presential training for educator, educators combining the topic of inclusive education and the maker culture, and current teachers of the common classrooms, teachers of specialized educational assistance, and school management professionals to involve students and their families and make pedagogical resources designed for all students in the class through the concept of universal design for learning and using, for example, uh, recyclable or low-cost materials, electronic circuits, and programming software. These meetings are held in partnership with the Lemon Foundation, and we are also had this year through video conference. Next page, please. Um, uh, Diversa has been generating relevant impacts on teachers from different countries that are facing challenges to guarantee that every person with a disability has access to education and inclusive schools. So far, the platform impacted more than 3.5 million users for more, from more than 110 countries, with almost 400 expiring practices from Argentina, Brazil, Denmark, France, and the United States. In the next slide, we have a video with our manifest. The world gets better when schools include everyone. Can we play the, the video, please?
Antônio e a solidariedade de cada pessoa. Começando pela escola, atingindo todo mundo. O mundo melhora quando a escola inclui todos. O mundo melhora quando a escola inclui todos. Inclui todos. O mundo melhora quando a escola inclui todos. To finish two more slides, uh, is, uh, Diversa has been financed by a group of companies and foundations related to the private sector that includes IBM, JP Morgan, CNA, and other organizations that invest in accessibility and education. Vision the long term sustainability of its programs, the Rodrigo Mendes Institute created an endowment fund. Uh, fund. This initiative counts on the support of the JP Morgan Bank and will contribute to the funding of the future of Diversa. And the next slide, next slide the, the last, the, the the last one. Uh, according to the strategic plan established by the Board of Councillors of Diversa, in the next four years, uh, we want to articulate an international net of experts and advocates that will participate in the creation, creation of a global database about inclusive education best practice. And one of the challenges is to offer its contents in multiple languages, such as English and Spanish. Actually, we have only in Portuguese from Brazil. That's all. I'm avail available for questions. And it's a, a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, uh, Laila. Really inspiring the, the, the platform. And congratulations, because you already identify uh, a very well-defined strategy for your financial sustainability. Uh, I, I think we will not have uh, too much time for, for questions, but I, I, I wanted to, to ask a general questions to, to all of you uh, uh, regarding how, how have you been dealing this year with this pandemic, the COVID? Which challenges did you, did you find uh, to continue implementing your solutions? And maybe uh, as you are technologically based, uh, which opportunities have you uh, find uh, to continue scaling uh, these, these uh, initiatives? Eh, lo que les quería preguntar, una pregunta general para los cuatro, porque se nos va el tiempo, es cómo han eh, enfrentado este año eh, con la pandemia. Eh, que... How this year, how you have been facing this year with pandemics, so as to implement and continue working in your um, projects and trying to continue reaching your beneficiaries with your solutions since you are working in technology, so which opportunities have you also identified during the pandemics and because of this uh, different context and different reality that we are experiencing so that's a general question whoever wants to give their an opinion please feel free who would like to comment about that i can start uh, we continue doing the teacher training with uh, video conference and at Diversa we created a new section on the portal with examples of good practice inclusive education during social isolation. So we interviewed uh, many schools, many teachers to, to know how uh, they are doing in this moment with the schools closed. And we have uh, a section dedicated to it. Sí, en, en nuestro caso. Ay, perdona, Carlos. Sorry, Carlos. Uh, las damos primero. En nuestro caso, tanto los psicólogos como los maestros. In our case, both psychologists and teachers have been, you know, all the 
all the professionals are continuing working, giving support intervention with children that are still in school and who were working online now. And now uh, many times the great importance of technology was shown because we have been able to continue with this work that we do, supporting the children directly, the, the teachers directly at schools, and since classes and courses have continued, they are continuing learning Braille and all, and supporting the families too, and the people, the people in uh, older people. So we we have continued. We have learned a lot. I think uh, professionals have used a lot, even more than users. And all this information we have gathered, and all these experiences will be lately published in a journal we have. The old journal we had is now read this one, and there will be a monography regarding all this so that everybody knows this reality that we have been living, right? Thank you, Carlos. Actually, we sell a lot to governments, um, and um, because of that, uh, many schools have been closed due to the pandemic, as you guys know. Uh, and this is not a situation only here, this is a situation worldwide. worldwide. Um, and um, some businesses that we were, were supposed to um, close, for example, in March or April, we are closing them now. Okay, but that's okay. Um, you know, the schools were closed, uh, but since there, there uh, some in some locations there are reopenings, for example, in Florida, uh, starting last week, we, we deployed Livox in six different counties. So six districts, each county has uh, multiple cities on it. Um, and so in these locations where uh, they are starting to reopen, we are uh, implementing our solution. Also, at the same time, we understand that in many locations, governments, they, decide to, they decided to use most of their budget to uh, fight the pandemic, which is okay. Uh, this is the, the reality in many locations. So uh, we also are trying to diversify our revenue streams because of that. But at the same time, our current users, they did so well during the pandemic. Um, we have some users, for example, in Kentucky um, and also in New York uh, and in Brazil, also in many different states that they were able to continue to have their education in a way uh, at home, of, um, although we were in the middle of a pandemic. Thank you very much. Uh, Juan, por favor, adelante. Juan. Tenemos nuestro intérprete para Juan. Sí. We have an interpreter for Juan. Adelante, Juan. Go ahead, Juan. But this is the need we have here for children to continue learning even if they are not in their schools. It's something that's been really important for us. We understand the government in different countries have been implementing and using technology because we know that technology is what we need in order to develop the different languages, to learn through the Thai language. So all of these things we can incorporate this through technology in order to give this to children, whether they are children with hearing disabilities or not to us. Our governments have implemented technology in education that has been good. We have seen in different countries that this technology has been implemented for the good. Thank you. Very good. Um, I think all the presentations have been facing similar challenges and we have been able to adapt very quickly to this new reality. So I want to thank Angeles, Laila, Juan, and Carlos for being with us today. Congratulate Zero Project for giving possibility to all these initiatives, these solutions that are helping uh, education of our children to be inclusive, to be possible. And uh, I want to invite you to continue. Keep on. And I give the floor to Carola and I have some information for us. Thank you very much, Carola. Thank you, Carolina. And um, for the truth, um, I, I also um, give your, the, my appreciation, um, my thanks to all of the initiatives. For me, this is the most important forum because 
definitely the challenges go hand in hand with innovation. And that's the great change and the great challenge that we have as a community of people with disabilities, and we have been able to challenge these days. And I want to take this opportunity to tell you that we have had over 100 people who have been with us listening to these different initiatives. And that says a lot about the importance of this for people. And I don't want to miss the opportunity to invite you for tomorrow. And we will be continuing talking about a very interesting topic. This is the second day of the conference tomorrow. Uh, the Zero Project Conference for Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, we invite you all. We went for you at 10 a.m. Chilean time. So please don't forget. We expect you tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much. Enjoy your evening and night, wherever you are in the world, without barriers. Bye-bye.